And um, yes, I think that is it. <laughs> I don't know if there is more to introduce. Yes, that's what I am. Yes, good evening, viewers. I am uh, Apollo Cheyune. I am uh, yes, an engineer by training, electrical, and uh, but I call myself a social engineer because along the way I switched from electrical engineering into social sciences. So I'm into social sciences now, and uh, that's what I do for the last 11 years. I've been doing more of that, the arts. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I'll give more as we go along. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, we welcome everyone who has just joined us. You're watching Family Talk Show, and we are here from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, there is a saying, we're going to begin with the saying that uh, Scott Adams said, engineers like to solve problems. If there are no problems handy available, they will create their own problems. Is it true? <laughs> <laughs> we we'll try not to create those problems. Uh, if, if you're talking about our family setting, mm. we try not to create them. Yes, <laughs> if it's working, don't fix it. Mm. Yes. Yeah, mm. so that is a very key thing in engineering. Mm. Don't fix it if, if it's working. Mm. So Some, sometimes instead of fixing, they mm. spoil so that you bring it you back can another create. day. <laughs> Probably it works for some people. Mm. But uh, mm. yeah. In other words, uh, mm. we are very happy to see you today on Family Talk Show. Thank you. Uh, how is the going with the economic crisis? How are you getting along with it? Mm. Is there? Uh, we are managing. Mm. You work, you fit in what is uh, available at the moment. You adjust and adapt mm. to the situation. When the fuel prices gets to 7,000, you park the car and <laughs> get to the border. <laughs> so you work with what is available mm. and make it work. Mm. So I think the, the human spirit will always survive mm. and always adapt. And I think uh, it is said that the species which survive best are those which can adapt mm. to a, an environment. Mm. So it's adapting to whatever comes. I think uh, that's what how we are approaching it. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Yes, so, th so today we're talking about parenting uh, generally, parenting together mm. when you're working like in different workstations. Mm. I believe you guys have been working differently, mm. whereas all of you are engineers. Mm. So how have you done it, basically? And how did you even come to terms to say that, okay, when did you become parents? You want to start with Apollo? Okay. Okay, I can start. Um, like I said, I've been, uh, work I worked in the ICT industry mm. for so many years, and uh, but along the way, I changed career and, uh, and I went into gender, women's empowerment, and social sciences, which I've been doing for the last 11 years. And then for the last few years, I've been working outside the country. And uh, I work with uh, Pan African Bank, and I've been there for some years. So Anne has been here with the children. Uh, we've been parenting for over slightly over 18 years, mm -hmm. but we've been married for 19 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we'll be making 20 in December. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and f fill in a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the question was parenting. How are we? Yes. Yeah. yeah, parenting. I mean, along the way, yes, the children come in and by God's grace. Mm. Yes, God gives you the grace to ensure that they grow and and you find a way of of um, you know balancing work and and the children. I'm currently currently I, I took a, a, a career break from uh, my engineering work, so I'm handling our family investments and you know doing family work and, mm. and ministry. So yes, parenting over the years, you know, yes, I'm doing the parenting while working has its own challenges, definitely. It has challenges that come with it, but yes, by and large. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been so a good journey. We are basically, yeah, like, mm. when, when you were starting parenting, mm. was it easy for you guys to settle down and you're like, you decided for it and you're mm. like, okay, this is a strategy. Did you have a, like, a plan mm. of, of having children? Because I know there are some family out there I know mm. about mm -hmm. that before the, like, when they, the first time they got to to get married, they said, ah, we have to have a plan, mm. family plan, behavior plan, mm. <laughs> all those things. 
I think ours was, we know when we got married, anyone's dream is to mm. have the children. So I always tell people you cannot control, I mean you're not good in the True. first place. So how, what do you control if you've not yet even got those children? So ours was to have the children. If, I mean if, if God was to bless us with them and he indeed blessed us with the children, yes, mm. there they are. The, 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 the handsome boys that we have and yeah balancing it with of course the work and then you know when they are little of course you you have to adjust when you have good supervisors you know who can also be able to to help you with this parenting role you know if you tell them the child is sick and then they allow you to go off or um, those days uh, because home was far home was quite far so you, you had to include the children. I mean, if the children were going to stay breastfeeding, then you still had to have, maybe you have to express the milk. And I, I thank God for the employers then, the employers that I had. You know, they, they, they would, you had that space where you would go and, you know, express and continue with your, yeah, your parenting journey so the child doesn't really feel like... They're left out. They're mm. left out. Mm, yeah. Yes. Mm. And uh, we didn't have a plan. A document mm. or a rubric mm. for parenting. Behavior Just plan. fall in the thing and do it <laughs> as it comes. Uh, but fortunately, I, ever since we got married, we've been part of the St. Francis Chapel Marriage Fellowship. Mm. So for the last 19 years, we've been members, we've been leaders in that group. Mm. And uh, in there, we've learned a lot about marriage, about parenting, about many things about, uh, to do with family. Mm. So in a way we've learned from our peers from our friends in the mm. fellowship how to parent how to bring up children mm. how to do marriage mm. so that has been a space where we have learned on the job mm. yeah. i think for most of this work there is no training mm. you learn as you go along and you get better and if you're intentional it it comes through mm. yeah I believe that your workstations have di been different, right? Yes. Uh, Mr. Apollo talked about working from abroad. Mm. So has it been easy to parent when you're alone at home? Because I know there are some times where you've been alone. Mm. Uh, Personally, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's hard, but it's not also easy. You know, it's mm. in, between, in between there. And, you know, like, like I said, you know, when you have that whole support <coughs> structure of people mm. who are helping you, are, around then the parenting kind of gets lighter uh, to say you know when you have a large support family parents grandparents uncles aunties friends well wishers you know the parenting then becomes yeah, mm. manageable yeah mm, manageable and uh, probably we can say for the first part for the larger part of our marriage we've been working close together we've been in Kampala our workstations have been here mm. and during that phase we were dealing with infants mm. Mm. and primary school children mm. so that one was taking them to hospital taking them to school taking them to events mm. taking them being there for them mm. and uh, running up and down for their parties birthday parties this and that mm. and so in that space we learned that being physically available was very key mm. and supporting each other especially when children are sick when uh, and is expecting or when she's on maternity leave the ability to be there together and parent together is very key when they are young mm. and uh, now as we the, the years went by and the children become teenagers that's when i now went out mm -hmm. and I've, we've got an experience of parenting teenagers in different workstations mm. now but we also have the last one who is also primary level mm. but uh, we've got the experience which was different mm. teenagers at a distance mm. and now that is a new experience mm. which wasn't in the first part of our marriage mm. Mm. so now that is more challenging but uh, with god's grace we've been able to work around it in different ways and uh, when you have the opportunity we will share what our experience has been of course give us the yeah. experience <laughs> okay we so for this part, I think, uh, like I said, for the first part, mm. when we are together, when the children are young, it's mainly physically present. Physical presence is very key mm. because there's a lot of work to do there. Mm. Now, when we talk about teenagers, mm. which we've uh, uh, before we go any further, you talked mm. about it's very important when kids are like are still infant mm. to parent together, mm. like parenting teamwork. Mm. You yes. said it's important. Mm. Why is it important? I said, yeah, physical presence. Mm parenting together and mainly being physically available because together 
doesn't necessarily mean physical, mm. physical together. Eh? You can be together in the mind mm. and your parenting. Eh? Yeah. But now I meant the physical presence and being there, if you can. Mm. Because uh, you find that a child is, has an infection and is spending the whole night in the hospital. Mm. If there is one parent, actually I feel for single parents, mm. you are spending the whole night in a hospital mm. with a child mm. and then at five you have to leave to go to office. Mm or you have to get some sleep but the child is awake. Mm. But when you are two, there is a way you support each other. Mm. One can uh, go to office, one can stay at home, there is a way you balance know, because you are I physically the there. Who says, the ah, ah, <laughs> so there is that. Eh? So the physical presence mm. is very key mm. to support each other. Mm. And uh, we thought that's what I referred to, the togetherness in kind of physical mm. presence of both of us. Mm. I know it's not easy for everyone, but uh, that would be the ideal. How, how does it help children? The teamwork. Yeah, the to, teamwork. Because together you achieve much. Mm. Just imagine if we were, assuming we were both working at the same family investment and all of us had to be off, for example. Mm. But you know, when you, when, you have, when you have teamwork and it's not a matter of competition, then you, you help each other. If, if in Uganda they will say, oh, why you and you know, you, you help here and help the other and help here. Yeah. Mm. And, the, and then the teamwork, that's how the teamwork It work also is. helps on the growth of the children. Definitely. Yeah, and also we are people of different personalities. Mm. Uh, me, I'm a soft person, mm. peaceful, mm. easygoing, easy with the children. Mm. Anne is strict and tough but lo and loves children. Eh? So when you get that balance, mm. soft, tough and what, the children get a good package. Mm. Because sometimes they may come to me looking for a soft landing. <laughs> and then when they go to Anne, it's a tough one. Mm. But when it balances out, mm. they get a, a, a better package. When we have different personalities working together, I think when there is only one personality, mm. the children may not benefit as much. Mm. When you have two different people trying to work out how to handle them. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so Apollo, you are taking us through the experience you've had with teenagers working with, uh, on different workstations. Yeah, uh, with teenagers, I think uh, we saw the difference. When the kids were young, mm. they were the obedient, they follow. Whenever you are going out, they want mm. to get in the car and go. As the children <laughs> grow, they want independence. When they become in teenagers, they want to be independent. Uh, some get moody, mm. they have opinions mm. which have to be considered. Mm. It's no longer the old way of saying that this is it. Mm. Children have opinions and they have a say. So you're managing this mm. and now you're also managing it from a distance. Mm. Or Anne is managing them alone at home mm. and managing boys. Mm. Uh, we saw that uh, there is a way when you work together, I there is a way you balance. The parent who is staying with the children mm. every day has a bigger burden to carry mm. because they are working out so many things to deal with teenagers. Mm. And uh, we also saw that as the children grow, they miss you less mm. as a parent. Mm. The, the young ones mm. may miss you. Mm. The older ones are probably waiting, what have you brought for me? Mm. The young ones, they do, may not show it that they've really missed you. Mm. And uh, probably Anne will also share experience of being with them mm. for these few years that She's been seated with them at home mm -hmm. while I was away. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, there are th ways we've worked around the issues, mm -hmm. that uh, the challenges that come with it, and parenting from a distance, but and fill in mm -hmm. the end. Yes. Our, our transformer, since, we, since you said we're electrical engineers, <laughs> yes, so our, little, <laughs> our boys are indeed transformers, and they can really transform mm -hmm. you. So one is you know, to, to avoid that arm twisting. It was like, like Apollo said, I, I am quite tough when it comes to, to certain issues, I, I, I may not, you know, and probably they'll go to Apollo who is softer and, you know, try to arm twist. But what, what I've also realized is that the more they realize that we indeed discuss things before, before we agree, mm -hmm. then the more they now try to fall into our, our, yeah, our plan. Because at the end of the day, it's up like, well, I, was, I was giving an example. One of our teenagers, there's a time I think wanted to drop like uh, chemistry. Mm. And chemistry had become chemistry. I personally did chemistry. So chemistry had really become an issue. So he talks to the father. So, and he really convinced him beyond reasonable doubt. So he calls me and he's like, and I think it needs to drop chemistry and it's okay. I said, no, I think we know we can't do that. 
we can't do it. So I also gave my reasons. And at the end of the day, we had to sit. I mean, sit cyber, the cyber city, mm. the other side. Of it. So we all agreed that no, this is the way we are going to go, and we we, we go to a solution. So some of those things are challenging, you know, because you you look at like a couple of said we have boys, and different they, they want to hear the father figure to hear that voice mm. yeah, you know that this is what daddy has said at the end of the day yes even mommy they will listen but they you don't want it to look like it's only you know mommy that is saying no 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 we can't do this yes mm. 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 wow mm. that's beautiful and then you talked mm. about mm. Uh, your, your your child like mm. wanted to drop chemistry mm. and you had to sign mm. like basically talk about listening to children mm. uh, most cases when teenagers grow mm. like a couple of say that mm. when they're infant mm. they want to go with you wherever mm. you're traveling they want to sit in the car mm. and travel with you so mm. everything is bliss mm. so when they get to teenager everyone mm. wants their privacy mm. they want some of them want to be on tiktok mm. some of them want to be so like everyone tends to be alone and mm. they feel like ah, ah, i think mommy and daddy now they are outdated mm. <laughs> i know that their times <laughs> yesterday when we were telling them to that we're going to be here. They're like, okay, so tell us what you're going to talk about and, you know, we, mm. we, we, we discussed. So I asked them that, um, sometimes you say, mommy doesn't listen. It's like, yes, but sometimes we say that's what we can arm twist you because we know you're going to, but, you know, it's all about listening. Now that they have grown, mm. they're no longer, the, the young ones, you know, who you just say, do this, do the other, do the other. No, now it's for sitting, we agree that this mm. is where we are going. This is what we want to do. For example, if, if we are looking at our home, we keep reminding them, the better this is our home it is not the maid's home yeah. so anything that happens to this home it is our home mm. so we sit and listen everybody knows mommy is not a maid mommy is not I'm going to do the work so we'll know that we're going to to clean up clean up the house you know we have to clean up this so it's it's about sitting and dialoguing with them and listening to them at the end of the day because mm. so they can choose to refuse of course yeah yeah mm. yeah you see apollo like mm. Uh, probably like Proverbs says mm. uh, in 20, 29 15 says mm. that a road and a, a, re, or a road mm. and a reprimand mm. impact wisdom but a child left and displaying mm. displaces its mother mm. sometimes when children are reprimanded they, f they like they feel like mom or dad is like is the worst thing that mm. has ever happened like like mm. is the last thing is the baddest thing that has <laughs> ever <laughs> happened to my life mm. so how do you discipline children mm. without feeling that uh, that thing like they are reprimanded mm. because like uh, uh, social <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Why I'm laughing is that uh, so many times I have been told that I say, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to beat you, and I actually don't beat. Mm. So, of course, that is a weakness that I have. But the reprimanding, <coughs> when they were younger, you could withdraw certain things. You know, mm. probably you were going maybe for a party and then they, they do something. It may not be the best, but it has worked for us. Mm. And you said, No, you will not come with us for the party. Or if it was going to be a birthday party, you said, No, we will not celebrate it. And that definitely puts the child according to us puts the child or has put back our children back into line to mm. some type of line that that we want and then of course like the bible says spare the road and spoil the child yeah you you spare it you, and spoil, then spoil, the you child. spoil the child of course we've not used the road too much but we have for the few times we have used it it has worked so everybody fears that road mm. yeah all, all children fear the road so if we can sit and dialogue and you know talk to them yeah it makes it worse it has worked but there are some parents who have really made it worse mm. they use the road like quite mm. often everything the road mm. everything the but road. to make the child stop to fear i mean they, they will stop fearing that road and they're like ah, either way they're going to beat me either mm. way they're going to um, beat me and, mm, mm. me i've never used the road mm. you've never used the road no <laughs> I don't know how to use it. There is a time I even got it and threw it away. I wish you were my father. And, uh, <laughs> and I think that uh, dialogue has been an approach. Mm. Probably the balance that we have with Anne, mm. when she may use the road and me, I don't. Yeah. Me, I use more of the talking. Mm. And uh, I feel that uh, you can manage without a road. And I've defined a road in a different way. Mm in a broader way not a actual stick mm. but uh, <laughs> a, a road of speaking mm. or talking to someone and mm. they change mm. and i must say that uh, we, we even without using the road for the last uh, many years of parenting mm. children have turned out okay mm. so i'm uh, having this hypothesis that mm. children can turn out okay without a road without <laughs> the real stick i think but, i'm going uh, to write a book 
<laughs> yes, still <laughs> studying. <laughs> Parenting without a road. <laughs> yes, so we talk to them. We talk to them and they listen and they change. And I think it is working. Mm. You yeah. think that with For African us. society that can happen? Some Me, of them, like, mm. some of them feel like... With them, what right? I've come to see is that everyone has what works for them. Mm -hmm. And you can't prescribe for different people, for different mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. So for ours, that has worked. Mm -hmm. It may have worked because of other circumstances around, mm -hmm. but uh, it may not work for others. But uh, it's doing okay for us. And the way we look at our children, uh, they've turned out okay. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those challenges so far that you've gone through parenting mm -hmm. together, with different workstations, mm. those challenges <coughs> that you've gone through? Yeah, probably we've alluded to some of them earlier mm. about uh, the parent who is with the child being the one taking the burden mm. of many things because on the day-to-day -day basis they're the ones handling the issues. And uh, when you're far, as the children grow, they, there's some distance that happens. Mm. I'm thinking that uh, we could share a little more of how we've worked around them. Mm. And uh, yes, how we have addressed the issues of the distance. <coughs> and uh, one of the things is uh, when I got my job abroad, yeah. Anne was also still working. Then Anne took a career break, and probably she can talk more around that. And one of the reasons for taking that break was to fill in the void which had been created by me going away. Mm. And you can probably say a little more about mm. taking a break and how it worked. Mm. You know, when you're when you're handling a full time, a full time career, yeah, yeah. So you know, there, there are so many things that, as the school runs, of course, as the children are growing, there are certain things that you will not be able to plug into. So you either choose that you sacrifice. In our view, that mm. is us. We we looked at it and we're like, you know, choosing to sacrifice. We can sacrifice the children or sacrifice our jobs or look at the future and see that indeed putting more time in them actually counts than trying to run and juggle all these shoes. Of course, there are people who are not able to do that. Mm. You know, able to, to take a career break, I'll call it a commercial break, you know, a commercial break in your, in your career. But it's at, at the end of the day, we see it has helped us. You know, you're, you're, you're able to attend some of the things that matter to the children. You know, go, when they were younger, going for a football match or going for their concert, yeah. or going for, what do they call, I, I, I like those MDD things that the children usually do. You know, going for them speech matters. Day. Yeah, they used to call them speech, they speak it, they, but it's speech, <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. You know, it, it's important to a child. You know, imagine a child is, is walking down or performing and then you're, you're shouting out their name. You know, they, they turn and they do it so much with, with so much mm. energy and vigor. So. So those are some of the things that we, we decided to do, we as the Chinese, cut down on a few things, take, take a break for a time, and then get the, 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 the family, you know, mm. balanced. Like was, it the board. was it no, easy? It was it easy to like you said balancing the board? Yes. Was it easy? Nah, uh, no, 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 no. It has never <laughs> been easy. Side, let go this side. Yes, you swab a little, swab uh, the other side, swab, but finally you, you get the balance. How did you come to terms and you're like, okay, let me leave my job because mm. you have your papers, mm. uh, your lands, mm. and you're really your job and <laughs> you've been earning your <laughs> salary and then you're like, okay, let me leave everything, let mm. me leave the papers mm. and then be a home mama. I, I think I would not call it a home mama. Ev everybody has priorities. Yeah. Every family has priorities. Every person, every person has what works for them. It's just like saying, if, if, if it was priority to be on this TV, then we'll make room to actually come here. Mm. But if it were not priority, then maybe we would have said, oh, you know, we have flu, we have this. So for everybody, everybody has something that works for them. And you know, you, you, you balance and you look, at, you look at, you know, what is ahead. I had been working for almost, um, I think 19 years. 19 um, years. Oh my God. So, I mean, you put your name on the line. If you're going to always be out of out of office, mm -hmm. you know, every time they call you, oh, you say, now I'm handling the family investment, or now I'm doing this, you decide mm -hmm. what is more important. Putting your career at, I mean, tarnishing your name. Mm -hmm. You know, because every time they're going to call you, they oh, now you see, I was at this, I was at the other, I was at the other, I was at that. So, we, as we, the two of us, we decided, you know, let's first concentrate on this, do it, and then we'll move on to, to the next. Of course, some people are not privileged to do that. <laughs> yes. <Not Yeah>. really. <laughs> and I think also that yeah. uh, relates to you cut down on, you know, it's a, it's 
an income you've cut off as a family mm -hmm. and it's not a tiny income mm -hmm. but it's a substantial income mm -hmm. but uh, you say it's okay mm -hmm. for a period mm -hmm. to forego that mm -hmm. for the benefit that you are going to get mm -hmm. but also it means that manage the way you manage in finances as a family mm -hmm. in, is uh, allows everyone mm -hmm. to use those resources mm -hmm. When Anne forgoes her job, mm. she was she had people on her payroll. Mm. I would say you're helping this cousin, you're helping this uncle, you're helping this. She was into supporting ministry. How do you handle that when you pull out? Mm. Because those are the decisions one takes before they resign. Mm. But now knowing that that is going to be part of our package even with one salary. Mm. So it makes it a little easier mm. to pull out. Mm. So Anne's pulling out has been a key mm. thing to support the family mm. and to parent. Uh, the other one, can I? Can we go on with the others, or you uh, want to? Let's have a quick breather. We want to first breathe mm -hmm. and uh, then make okay. some money. <laughs> and then All right. Come back after this break. All right. Family talk show, and we love you so much every time you tune in Church of Uganda Family TV. Do you have one? Is in your marriage? Do you have one? Is in your family? Actually, this is what God has has called uh, married people. We need to go back and appreciate the, the plan God gave us mm. for that family. The plan God wants us to have, we need to work hard and so. God will bless the works of our hands. Amen. Still watching Family Talk Show and <coughs> welcome. Thank you for joining in at today's studio. Tonight we are having engineers, of course, they are showing us their experience, how they've handled uh, working on different workstations, but they are giving us those tips that you can use, use a, you as a parent. But thank you for joining in. You're doing a beautiful, uh, you're, good, you're doing a beautiful thing. I salute everyone who has just joined us, those ones who have tuned in. Uh, you're such a blessing to us, Central Africana Family TV. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when it, when we went in for a break uh, and you were telling us that you left your papers mm. and you're like for 19 years you're like okay I'll let go mm. Mm. <laughs> I'll let go and then stay home and then do the investments that are at home mm. how do you get to decide it as a parent and mm. how does it help children mm. basically if you leave your work and mm. let let me sit down and and do the parenting mm. and it's not easy it's not easy for women to do that no, it's not them. easy. It's not easy because we all want to be, you know, independent, have that, that cash on you. But at the end of the day, like I said, it is, it's, it's a personal decision that you make or a family decision where you sit mm. and uh, you look at, you know, at the end of the day, what we do. The times when I tell people, I, I, I can't talk about myself without talking about my parents. Their sacrifices they have made. Mm. You know, their sacrifices they have made them as them. And we also have to pass them on to, you know, to our children. You know, if, if, if it's the children that we want to, to, to get out, or if it is the investments that we want to, you know, to, to help nurture, or if it's uh. your name, you know, if, if you've been, like I've said, if, if you've been working for, for a long time, and it's your name on the line, you're not going to be always giving those excuses, I am out, I am this, I am the other, then you have to, to make the decision and... Like mm. I look at the sacrifice <laughs> of doing chemistry, <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah, there are times when, you know, there are times like the children. Uh, yeah, mm. when we were having challenges, you know, with math. I love math. I love chemistry. Mm. I actually dig in deep and you know sit and read those subjects and and, and get to help even them. Even up to now. Yes, because even up to now. So well. Yes, I, I may not have been the best in, mm. in my school. That doesn't matter. But you know, I can still sit and you know do them. Yes, I revise with them. Mm. Hmm. Even I talk about the issue also, like on doing homework, mm. uh, homework as per What if, like, the parent, mm. I, I, like, is it really important for mm. you to sit down do homework with, with the children? Or you can helps. put for them, because they can ask you a question, my friend, mm. and you have to run to Google, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, there are times, you know, when you have to run to, to mm. Google, sir, mm. but, uh, you know, it's the physical presence that, that Apple talks about. I may not understand some of the things. Mm. True. I may not understand some of the things, but it will also help me to 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 research to research further. Yeah. You know, with with the children and help them. I, one of my children was telling a friend at school that, I, so you mean your mother helps you with math? She's like, yes. She she knows those things. And and to me, I felt it was one of those confidence builders for mm -hmm. them. You know that I can be able to sit and help them with their with those you know sore sore points. You know. 
I, and I feel good. Yes. <laughs> it makes me happy. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> yes, and even when they were younger, I mean, it's good to help them, really. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, um, Mr. Apollo, you talked about being, like, being uh, away from mm. home while and was, was, like, was at home parenting. How do you get to, like, how do you get to communicate with maybe the missing parent who is not available? Because you might come back and they start, the children maybe start calling you uncle. There are scenarios like that, <laughs> uncle daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I think for the time I've been away, so far over four years, mm. uh, we have talked every day. Literally every day, mm. literally every day, mm. we have talked and uh, communicated with Anne and the children on a daily. And for the first year, it was just talking about what has happened through the day. But after the first year, uh, when COVID came and I was no longer working in office, I was staying at home, Anne at said that, uh, Apollo, you have to lead the family altar. There is no excuse that you are in office because there's a three hour time difference between my workplace and Kampala. So when they were praying, I was still in office. Mm. Now when COVID put us at home, she said there's no more excuse now for not leading family altar. It is your time. So it's your time. So for the last two, over two years, every day, I've been communicating to lead the family altar and the other things that go with it. Mm. And uh, even when Anne is not around, I connect with the boys and we pray. But what we've seen is that uh, the Bible is a good parenting tool. It's a manual for parenting. There is a way you use the scriptures to parent. And there is a w so we've made it practical. Mm. And uh, for example, one of the books we've used a lot is uh, we've used uh, Kings, eh? the story of David, mm. how he fought the lion and the bear, mm. and how he used that to urge to Saul, King Saul, that he will kill Goliath. So we tell them that even as you're doing your simple cures, which mommy has given you, washing dishes, cleaning the house, washing this, doing that. Kill that lion and the bear. Mm. And when the bigger things come, you'll also kill them. Mm. Be good at the little thing you've been given like King David was. So the Bible for us has been a key thing as for parenting. And because I've, we've been doing it every day, I've been remote, but I've been there every day. Literally, mm. I don't think I've missed them. I don't, the missing hasn't been so much yeah. because we've talked on a daily, every evening. We are talking for the last four years, and that has helped to fill that gap. Yeah. So, what are those tips like? Those tips that you've used because you you work like differently, different workstations. So, what are those tips? Maybe we could help a parent out there. Those mm -hmm. ones, long distance relationships mm -hmm. or long distance like the long distance parenting. Mm -hmm. What are those tips that you've used that maybe they can use and uh, to be successful in their parenting? You can share with us. Of course, the tip about communication mm. and keeping it constant and daily. Oh, for us, it has been daily. That is what has worked for us. But also, like now, I'm here in Uganda, but it is on, I'm doing remote work. Mm. I'm at office. I'm not on leave. Eh? So all opportunities which we can use to be back home, we've looked for them. I think for most of the Christmas, Easter, we are together. Most of the holidays, we are together. So there is a way you can round, uh, work around the challenges you have and look for opportunities to work, yeah. uh, to be around. Like uh, the physical presence I mentioned is important, uh, especially the teenagers in our view like to not to be told what to do. They want you to model, mm. to be the example, and they look up to you. So that's why when you're there and you do things and they say, daddy can do this, that means it's doable by a man, it can be done, it is okay to do it. Eh? Yeah. Instead of mommy telling them you should do it. When they see me do it, they'll do it. Mm. So that's why we lo we've looked for any opportunity that the workplace can offer and we use it so that we can be together within the limitations that we have. We've seen that sometimes when you are intentional and focused on being available, it could be one month, yeah. but that one month you are there and intentional can be more effective than a whole year of just being there without intentionality. You can be a father there every day, but you're not having any impact on them because you're never at home, but you're in Kampala. Mm. But you may be around for a short time, and that short time can have a big impact on them. Yeah, those ones who are around, but they're always on the phone. No. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah. and like what are those challenges maybe mm. you've gone through uh, maybe some parents would like some of them give up mm. and like ah uh, I did not bear this child alone mm. please you come back and let's parent them together I, I also sacrificed and left my job nah. that I've been working for 19 years <laughs> Um, I think we've used, we've, we've tried to make um, the, the, the technology mm. our friend. You know, we've, we've, we've not, you know, shunned technology. We've used technology. We've, like, like Apollo said, we, he meets the children every day. And we're going to, we've purposed that technology has to work for us. Mm. You know, whether it is one or one, because, you know, there are some duty stations where you won't be able to take these children. But if we can, you know, cut that space, that space of, uh, of uh, you know, the physical presence, if you can actually be able to, to meet on the Zooms, on the WhatsApps, on the what, we've used that. Mm. Yeah, so you, you know, you cannot say, oh, we're not able to talk to the children, not able to meet. Yes, the calls are very expensive, definitely, but being able to, to, to use some of those, you know, where you put data, instead of me putting data and, you know, sending funny videos and yeah. what, we put that and be able to, yeah, to communicate and touch best with them. Wow, so mm. let's first, uh, uh, thank you so much, mm. those ones who are sending in your WhatsApp comments, mm. of course we are going to be reading and then the Chinese will be giving us your reactions to <laughs> Are you ready for them? Yeah, yes, we yeah. <laughs> are. Uh, this one says, I am, I am, I am, I am Dagire mm. from Kawempe says, my husband and I have been together for over 10 years mm. before our, um, before our daughter. Our young daughter came along. Our marriage was good, but since since having a baby, everything's gone. Everything's gone downhill. My husband comes from work, eats, and like heads straight for the TV and his phone. Mm. I'm lucky if I get conversation out of him at dinner. As a result, I'm exhausted. I can't seem to have a normal conversation with him without arguments. Mm. <laughs> 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 so the husband <laughs> comes yeah. back from home, yeah. uh, he's always on the phone and mm. he's always on the TV mm. and whenever they communicate, they're always arguing. Mm. Ever mm. since they had a daughter, mm. in other words, ever since they started parenting, mm. things turned around mm. down the hill. She is down the hill, everything mm. will went mm. down you know, you know i i always think that like we said parenting is intentional mm. so if 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 one we're going to to be on the nagging side of of you know everything everything you know you're nagging about the phone you're nagging about the other then some things might not work you know mm. uh, daddy might just say ah let's let's i mean it, it is well because either when i do something you don't even notice it so mm. we need to capitalize on on the team effort that we each bring everybody has a strength everybody has um Everybody has a strength or something good they can put in. So we need to capitalize on each other's strengths as, as parents and, and know. Mm. If we're going to come, like when I'm going to talk to Apollo, probably maybe in the evening. I know he's definitely tired. But we have, I, in my mind, I purpose. I know this, A, B, C, D. And if I, know, if I say something and I feel it's going to maybe trigger off something else, mm. you shelve that one and you're like, it will be for another time. But being intentional with 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 aligning yourself so he's not only on phone you know sometimes it's good also to to have other peers like we've said we're part of saint francis marriage fellowship mm. so for that it has really blessed us it has nurtured us and it has shown us some of these uh, things that we can do to you know to, to to be able to get everybody's attention mm. so that everybody knows that we are we're a team as we parent we're not just uh, competitors at mm. the end of the day yes i think that's what i can say for for Ndagi. Yeah, and I think that uh, there is help out there. Mm. Uh, many times couples are married and uh, they are doing marriage mm. by default. But I think uh, when you are part of groups that can help you, we can learn. We all learn. None of us come knowing what to do. Mm. But we learn from peers, we learn from church, we learn from different places. And I would encourage different couples, both husband and wife, mm. to learn. Mm. to look for what to do mm. and to intentionally do something about it because uh, like Anne said once you are intentional you see how to come in mm. and do anything little that you can do will benefit a child different but it would also lighten the burden on the other spouse because parenting alone is not easy when you share the burden it becomes easier when you are disciplining a child and you share opinions you probably give out a bit better discipline than one sided opinion mm. yeah so all of us can learn and there is none of us who are born 
good at parenting, but we can learn and there are spaces for this. Wow, thank you so much. You can also join in the conversation on number 0787-447684. That is our WhatsApp number. And then this one says, Stanley from Kenya says, I've been separated from my wife for over a, a year now. Yet, we've not come to a suitable arrangement for our children in terms of child care. It feels all, uh, it feels all one-sided at a moment. My ex-wife detects the time, dictates the time, days and location for contact and pickups. Is there a cheaper alternative to mediation? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Is there a cheaper, a cheaper alternative to mediation? Mediation as in legal mediation yeah, or... Maybe legal mediation <laughs> or maybe getting back together because whenever mm. they want to meet, or maybe whenever, I want to understand that whenever mm. this guy wants to meet up with the children mm. they've been separated with the wife for one year mm. so whenever they want whenever he wants to meet up with the children mm. the wife usually has something something coming up it's mm. like uh, you know the children today mm. they're having this time this day what what it would be nice if you make it maybe mm. like the next week and that is the time that he has gotten to meet up with the kids, <laughs> to know them, so that they, so that maybe they don't call him uncle, uncle daddy, mm, uncle daddy. <laughs> I think personally, I would advise mm. um, having a, a parenting plan. You know where you say that uh, this is what I'm going to do, maybe when I have the children, or this is what I'm going to, and they don't have to be expensive, you know. If 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 the if if if, if the lady is actually going to dictate mm. where the children go, where they and you always wants to keep an eye on on the children, then let it be within. I mean, in a place where she can. If it's going to be maybe a park, mm. I'm imagining the children are young. If if it's a park where she's going to where he's going to take the children, and let him maximize on on that little time. Mm. That's what I would think. Or join groups mm -hmm. like Apollo said, eh? because you know when you join certain groups, then they also help you with with that. As in, someone will say, "Oh, let me take the children." If the, if the wife trusts, yeah, the, the the that particular person that is asking for the children, and it mm. may work, it may work. So sometimes we we make the numbers too complicated. We tell you find X and for you want to find find Y. <laughs> so I think I think if you joined groups, I, I, that's what I want to believe. Mm. And maybe have have nice friends the wife doesn't feel insecure about. Probably it would it would help. That's mm. what I think. Apollo, is there any cheaper alternative? Uh, uh, that area mm. I've not had experience in it, <laughs> and I would just be theoretical. <laughs> so uh, I think what Anna said would suffice. Mm. Yeah, I don't know much about that area of. Mm. Uh, he wants some help. Mm. Yeah, he I wants know. Some help. So, and then this one says, I've been seeing the most amazing man for just over a year now. Mm. We've been slowly building up our relationship. I've had some challenges, but have fallen deeply in love with each other. Mm. However, I'm feeling deeply depressed and upset as I recently came to realize that I'm ready to have a baby, although I don't think he is mm. a man ever ready. <laughs> 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 She's ready to have a baby yeah. and they've mm -hmm. been married mm -hmm. uh, now for over a year now and uh, the guy is like he's not ready to have kids yet the lady, the wife is ready to have kids. Uh, I think it varies for different people. Mm -hmm. uh. There are those who are ready even before marriage. <laughs> there are those who may not be ready mm -hmm. and they don't, they want to first have some fun. But I think is that uh, the couples need to talk about this. Mm. What is their plan as a family? And what was the intention for getting married? Some people get married to, get, to have fun. Other people get married to have children. Other people get married and they discover what they're supposed to do when they're in marriage. So I think that uh, they need to talk and plan out their marriage. A marriage is a space, one, to grow as husband and wife, but also to procreate and have children. And if the Lord has blessed you with children, why not? You need to agree on that and uh, meet each other. Because people have, diff all of us may have different priorities as a husband and wife. You need to meet each other's need. And so it's good to appreciate the need of your wife and the need of the husband and to see how to address that and not be selfish. Because sometimes we enter marriage with selfish needs. I want to have fun. I've entered into a marriage to have fun. But the other person has entered to have children. How do you meet each other? Mm. 
but also I think we need to be responsible. Some of us, some men may run about away from the responsibility of having children. We feel that is a burden. But it is a responsibility when you signed up to be married. It's a default thing. Probably. <laughs> you need to have children. So you may need some help so that you go and go ahead with it. Mm. That's why you got married. Children are part of the package in my view. Wow. This one says that uh, uh, since we, we got children, my husband never has never said I love you since then. It has been for for ten years. I don't know. I think uh, he usually tells me that I've gained weight, which is really uh, a sad, a sad thing for me. How have you done it, the chain names? They have been married for ten years, and since they got children, the husband has never told. How that I love you. Mm. So everything, as, so like since they started the parenting <laughs> bit of it, <laughs> everything like I, I think I think we usually have expectations mm. that um, that are that are that are hard, is what I would think. You know, when you imagine that, it, when I have children, definitely I'm going. I'm not. If you looked at my wedding photos now, I mean then and now, I have definitely changed. So there's nobody who is going to stay static. No one. No one is going to they stay. They want the portable they go <laughs> yes. to the bird too. No one. No one will say such a But, you know, it also doesn't hurt to, if uh, there's a friend at, at, at office once who told me after I'd also got him, I don't know if it was the last born or the middle one, mm. and he told me, Mchala che yune. Oluso kubea ni mpita cha chitalo nyo, is what she told me. And every time I always remind her mm. that. Uh, it, but it was from a good space. You know, she's trying to tell you, by the way, try to go back to no more. Yeah. You know, sometimes we get so comfortable with, with, with the normal and you think it is okay to actually be, mm. you know, to be on, 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 on the, with, with, no offense, to be on the, not that I am small, but, but at least, you know, it helps you when you also. We said you know it. Yes. Yes. Uh. It, it helps. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, there are people who are endowed with words, mm. and they can say, "I love you, mm. honey, mm. sugar." Mm. But they were calling them before. Calling and what? Calling and them and yeah. before. So now yes. she no longer hears. She them. no longer hears them mm. because they have. And uh, also, the background may matter mm. how you are brought up and how words easily come to you. Mm. But there are also <laughs> love languages. The way someone shows their love. Mm -hmm. uh, I could do things which show that I love you. Mm -hmm. I may say it not as frequent mm -hmm. as I do it, eh? mm -hmm. but the things I do mm -hmm. can show you that the I actions. love you. There are actions that I do. Yet there are people who may also tell you I love you every day. I love you. But there's nothing to show. Mm -hmm. When I'm stuck here and I need a ride to my office, you say take a taxi <laughs> or do this. But you, you every, day, every day you tell me you love me. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, help me with this thing. I'm tired. Can you look after the child as I sleep? You say no. Mm. But you love me. You tell me you love me. Mm. Then there are people who may show actions. Mm. Who may do. They may not say much. But, but what they, they do. do. And I think in, in my view, it is the love language of the person. Mm. And uh, for us, uh, me, I easily love by doing. By doing things. And I don't, I don't have many words naturally. Mm -hmm. I don't talk much. And because the way I was brought up is not to splash, I love you, I love you. It's not, com <laughs> it's not easy. It's to give we, we, are, we are learning it yeah. with time, eh? but it doesn't come easy. Yeah. But doing things that show that I love you. Mm -hmm. And deep within you, you say, I think this guy really loves me. He yeah. did this, he did this. I was stuck here, he came. So it is that. And I, me, I, would, me, I would tell ladies mm -hmm. that even as you pursue someone telling you things that they love you, also look for the action mm. the love of verbs mm. the love of action eh? mm. look for it there's the romantic one also which is good but the other one is also important it, and it is in my view <laughs> stronger eh? if i could use that okay and i think we're remaining with five minutes uh and give you guys uh, give us your parting shots on new like parents who have just joined, mm. they have been into this like for one year mm. and they're experiencing those things like uh, sleep, sleepless nights, increased pressure on relationship, you know, mm. they're juggling between parenting and then you have to look after your husband here and there, those things, mm. the pressure and then having much less uh, free time than you used to. 
those things? I always believe in a, a supportive system, a, a network of, of support. Um, in my home, I've always had house hopes. So I know if you want to juggle all those things, then have this, have that support structure. Maybe but grandparents, there, sorry? There are husbands mm. Mm. whom I know, they're like, mm. Ah, mm. me, I don't work well with with housemates mm. you would okay then if you <laughs> have to work alone everything you have to do everything <laughs> alone and <laughs> then i think that that's not teamwork I, mm. I would i would think that's not teamwork at the end of the day but if you have a support structure if your parents are fortunate to be still alive or if you have uncles and aunties that are mm. still around for us we have used that and i really want to thank my my siblings my, my in-laws, you know, for, for being there, mm -hmm. like when the children were younger. And even now, as they are older, the, the teenagers, they, they have some role models they, they, they look up to. Their uncles have one special one. I mean, there are very many special ones. I won't say one special one. Mm -hmm. Uncle O, you know, you know, with the children, where you sit and they, they have role models and, you know, they can, they can be able to help you with, yeah. with some of them. Uncle Ivan, Uncle Peter, you know, Uncle, Uncle, uh, there's so many uncles all over down out there for the boys. And maybe for the girls, probably they could get aunties. I have seen my mm -hmm. nieces. Yeah, you know where they have a special auntie and the auntie helps also with, with that side of that side of things. Okay, thank you so mm. much, Apollo. Could you give us uh, one verse that maybe parents out there could use in yeah. their daily life? Yeah, thank you, Brenda. And the, the verse is Proverbs 22, 6. Mm. Uh, train up the child in the way they should go, and when they grow, they will not leave it. Mm. They will not depart from it. Mm. Uh, many times, the little bit that we put in them, mm. Sometimes they may appear like they are not caring, especially as they grow older, they may not even give attention to it. But we are, we've listened to many testimonies. As they grow, they get into the, their 30s. That which their mother put in them or their father at a young age comes back. Mm -hmm. So for us is plant the seeds there, plant the seeds there. They may not show anything now, but uh, they will benefit from it, even as it's not lost. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's it. The, the parenting verse that I find important. Thank you Thank so you. much. That was the Chayune for you. It has been a blessing and I'm not going to add on anything. I'm not going to add on anything. You had it for yourself. And in case you've missed this show, just you can find it on our social media platforms. It's going to be Touch of Uganda Family TV. It's going to be uploaded. Thank you so much for watching. I send my shout outs to everyone who has been watching. With me, Brenda Mahoro, I love you so much. And it, there's going to be a repeat on Sunday at 8 p.m. I love you next is going to be health support by Adrian Mokalas. Family talk show and we love you so much every time you tune in Church of Uganda Family TV. Do you have one is in your marriage? Do you have one is in your family? Actually this is what God has, has called uh, married people to. We need to go back and appreciate the, the plan God gave us. Mm. For that family, the plan God wants us to have, we need to work hard and so, God will bless the works of our hands. Amen.